The famous church tax. In this video, we're going to tackle everything you need to know as an expat in Germany about the church tax. I have here my German wife slash expert, just because she's German, that will explain a little bit about the church tax. <laughs> hey, I'm Jen. And I'm Yvonne. And we're from SimpleGermany.com, where we help expats settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. So, Yvonne, tell me. First of all, is there a thing as church tax in Germany? Duh, of course. Why duh? Not every country has a church tax. Like in Latin America, there's like no such thing. No, duh, because the introduction already said that. Ah, okay, fair point. So, yeah. tell me a little bit more. Since when do we pay church tax in Germany? Uh, do you as know? far as I know. No, I do know because we researched it. Ha. <laughs> um, since 1919. Wow. That's 1919. Wow, that's, that's a long time. Okay, I also read that in 2019, for example, apparently 12.7 billion euros were paid into the church as church 12. tax. 12.7 yeah. billion. Yeah, that's a lot. So that gives an indication of how many people in Germany are actually paying the church tax. And what's super curious about this is that not because a German is paying church tax, he's actually going to church, right? Not or she. Or she, sorry. That was so bad. Not because... Uh, a German is paying church tax, does it mean that they're going to church, right? Uh, it just means that it's, it's done automatically. Okay, so how is an expat, like how, if I move to Germany, how do I even start paying church tax? Like how does that process even get triggered? Like how does the government know that I need to pay church tax? So when you move to Germany to live here and to work here, mm -hmm. you need to register your address that you're living at with your local authorities. Which is the famous Anmeldung. Anmeldung, exactly. Okay. And it's super important because without that, you, like some people might think they can skip that step, but without the Anmeldung, you often are not cannot open a bank, you can't get an internet provider, mm. so you need it to settle in Germany and actually get your life started. And you need to do that within the first two weeks after moving to your um, new home. Okay. And to do that, uh, in the Anmeldung, you have a beautiful form, as bureaucratic as it is, and uh, you give your details and your address, and then there is this beautiful little question, um, are you religious or are you part of a church? Uh -huh. And then you have there several boxes that say like Catholic, Evangelic, um, Muslim, and I don't know what. Other maybe, yeah. yeah we, we, put, we put the form up here. And, um, well, I mean, I would say, at least tell, tell me how you did it. You arrived, you had the form, and it's just a personal fact list and you check whatever applies. Yeah, so I would say in other countries, like I've, I've filled out forms in other countries as well, and sometimes they ask this, and just like you said, just to know the facts. So I, I wasn't religious in Guatemala, I didn't belong to any, I didn't go to any church or whatever, so I left it blank, right? However, I would, I have also had like friends that come from Mexico or other parts of Latin America, they're like, oh yeah, I'm Catholic. And they mark it because they've been baptized, right? They, they, they have gone to church or they go to church often. But you, as an expat, at least for me, you see it as a... Statistical question. Yeah, like yeah. maybe they just want to know, am I religious or not? I, you don't think about it further than that. But, However, yeah. this check that you do or not has the implication of actually you paying church tax or not while living and working in Germany. Hmm. Because apparently when you do this, right, the registration office sends your information to the Finanzamt, which is like the financial uh, official amt. Authority. <laughs> Authority, thank you. <laughs> and then they say, oh, look at that, Jen is Catholic. So now I'm going to send, I'm going to link her tax ID to the, to the church tax because now she's going to pay church tax. That's how the match is done. That's how the match is done, yeah. So what is interesting here is like, okay, so... We have to point out that not every religious community pays church tax, right? So which yes. so which religions do pay church tax? I think so there, there are like seven uh, recognized um, like religious communities that get to pay church taxes. Okay, um, we'll we'll show them to you here. Uh, but the most common ones are um, Catholics, uh, ev Evangelics, um, and Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, then there are others that don't pay church tax. Among those, um, the most uh, common, at least I would say. Um, in Germany or the world, are um, Muslim and Buddhist. Mm. So, you know, just to know, not because you're checking a box means you have to pay church taxes, it's just for the certain type of religion that you belong to. So if I would be Buddhist, and I would Buddhist, and I would, in the Anmeldung, put religious Buddhist, Buddhist <laughs> then I don't get charged the church tax, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, that's cool, okay. Um, so why is this such a big deal? Um, because tons of experts don't know this exists and they just check the box and then they find out about it how? Through the payslip, because this goes to the next point, how do you actually pay the church tax? So it's not like you wire the money monthly, <laughs> you don't even get that option, it actually gets subtracted from your paycheck directly 
And like you mentioned, a lot of people, when they read their pay slip, they suddenly see Kirchensteuer. Yeah. What is and that? And have no idea what it is. Yeah. That's why we also did a video, actually, I did a video, um, <laughs> up here explaining how to understand and read a German pay slip because it's very bureaucratic. And uh, that's how uh, lots of people actually see it for the first time. Why do I get subtracted? Uh, let's hmm. say if your gross uh, salary per month is um, like 4,000 euros, you pay roughly 60 euro per month uh, t t church tax. So which this, is so again, so maybe to structure this a bit better. So how much of your salary do you pay on church tax? Um, if you live in uh, Bavaria or Baden-Württemberg, the two southern states in Germany, it's mm -hmm. 8% of your gross salary. Okay. And then all other states, it's 9% of your gross salary. Ah, okay. And to give like an example, how much, if I'm earning 4,000 euros a month, for example? Uh, with a gross salary of 4,000 euros, you pay roughly 60 euros in church tax per month. Hmm. Okay. And what benefits do I have? for being part of the church or paying church taxes in this case, right? Well, that means you belong to the religious community mm -hmm. and that you can get married in church, uh, like by a, get married by a pastor. Um, you can have your kids baptized and you are part of the community. Um, like you mentioned, you know, some churches have like special housing and you have access mm -hmm. to them. Um, it's being able to use their facilities. Yeah, and, and probably access to, to other services. Yeah, yeah, could be, yeah, okay. So we covered that. Um, so now the question is like, if I, let's say I put I'm Catholic because I don't know, all my family is Catholic and I just assumed I'm Catholic. <laughs> However, I don't want to get married by the church. I don't use the facilities and I don't want to pay the church tax anymore, to be honest. Can I get out of it? Yes, you can. Okay. And how do I do that? Bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> so um, it depends. To, um, it depends tatsächlich all over. No. <laughs> it, <laughs> Super Danish. <there>. Danish. <laughs> so it depends on the state. Um, in Germany, mm -hmm. the states um, have a, it's a very federalistic system and each state has um, their own rules and regulations. And um, funny or not, well, I don't know if it's funny, but interesting or not, <laughs> uh, you actually have to pay to leave hmm. the church. Not always, though. I heard that there is a... I Brandenburg. Think, yeah, there it's for free. Yes, that's However, the only everywhere stage. else you need yeah. to pay some money. Between, I would say, 10 and 30 euros. Um, yeah. We have a map here that we created uh, that actually shows you where you need to pay what. Mm -hmm. um, and we also link below the page called Kirchenaustritt, leaving the church, uh, that explains to you all the steps to take in your state, which um, go from you are able to leave it in church. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to go to court or to a notary. Yeah. Um, so the bureaucratic hurdles um, are there. You need to take them if you uh, decide to leave the church, um, whether it is for the tax or another reason. Yeah, story time. Um, How not paying church taxes went wrong. Yes, okay, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, have a friend who's Italian and he used to live in Germany. Oof, this was a long time ago, I would say. Um, and he had been living in Germany for, I would say, four years by that time and it's so unlucky right because after four years uh, he decided it was time to go back home back to Italy so he was uh, gathering everything he was I think a few months away from leaving when suddenly he got a letter from the Finanzamt actually telling him hey by the way uh, you owe us this much money for church taxes, thousands of euros uh, for the last uh, four years that you have been in Germany why thousands of euros because if you earn let's say four thousand euros gross a month then you're paying 60 a month. That's roughly 700 something a year. So if you've been four years, right, that multiplied by four, it, it adds up, right? And my friend came to the office the next day, like telling me the story. And I'm like, dude, well, just leave the church. He's like, and he was like, so like, you know, Tony's He's like, no, I, I can't leave the church because, because I want to get married in the church, right? Like I want to have a church ceremony. And if I leave the church here, they're going to tell Italy that I'm no longer Catholic, so I won't be able to marry the church. And I'm like, what do you mean they're going to tell Italy that you're no longer Catholic? He's like, yeah, well, that's how they caught me, right? Because apparently the German church somehow got in, talk to, in contact so with he, the Italian church. he didn't church. tick the box. He yeah, didn't so tick the box in the Very Anmeldung. important. Yeah. And the Anmeldung, he didn't tick that he was Catholic. However, he was baptized in Italy, and I would say maybe that's... And he had this, his first communion as well, so that indicates that you're part of the church, right? Like you're Catholic. And somehow, I, I really don't know until today, it's a mystery how the German church figured that out. They communicate, yeah. And then they inform the Finanzamt. And now my friend was put in a position, okay, but I do want to use, I want to be part of this community in Italy. So I have to pay the church tax in Germany. 
So what did he do? He ended up paying actually. Um, and this, I actually, as we were doing research for this, um, for this information, I found other uh, blog posts and other uh, uh, forums from expats that this has happened to other Europeans as well. Yep. There was a French guy who uh, also had the same. So if you're a European and if you move to Germany, don't think that just because you don't tick that box, oh, I'm not going to pay church tax, be careful because you might get caught. So basically you have to decide what you want out of life, right? Right. You want to belong to the church community? then be happy to pay taxes yeah. or not. But don't try to evade taxes by being in a church in your home country, but not, but not in Germany. Here, yeah. Yeah. But I would say this is mainly European. I highly doubt that if you are Mexican, I would say they're going to communicate with the Mexican church. I don't know. We don't we know don't that know. far. <laughs> we don't know. However, we also have a Mexican friend who was a very happily part of the Catholic church. And then uh, because she got married through the church and whatever. And after years, she's like, you know what? I don't want to pay the taxes anymore. So she left the church, and that, again, was a very bureaucratic process. <laughs> Funny enough, it was in Dusseldorf, and the hotline where you can make an appointment to unregister from the church, it's only open, like, between 8 and 9 a.m. on, like, weird days, like, Tuesdays and Thursdays. It was very tough for her to first make an appointment. Then she needed to, obviously, go to that appointment, and I think here in Dusseldorf, you also need to go to a notary. And explain yourself. And explain why, because you also need to give an explanation why you don't want to be part of the church anymore. Um, and then I think it took a few months and then she successfully left the church. Yep. So that was pretty much it on church tax. Yeah. Uh, I hope, uh, we hope that you have a clearer picture of, um, what it is, uh, how you get to pay it, why you have to pay it and how you can not pay it. Um, again, just be sure this is not a guide to how to evade taxes. It's more a no. guide of conscious decision, yeah. um, when moving to Germany and, um, how you want to live and pay your life here. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. <laughs> so if you found this uh, video helpful, hit that like button. And if you hit that subscription and notification bell, you will get notified when we release new content. So we hope to see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.